for joining us to talk big picture and more. Troy Gajewski, I'm happy to say, is here back on the TD Ameritrade Network, Chief Market Strategist at FS Investments. Troy, number one, it's great to have you here. Number two, congrats on the new gig. Tell us about it. What are you going to be doing? Yeah, great to see Oliver and happy Thanksgiving to you. It's Thank been you. too long, my friend. Yeah, so super excited to join FS as Chief Market Strategist. You know, very excited to work with the investment teams, uh, generate and uh, deliver the macro view to the marketplace, differentiate our products in the marketplace, and uh, come up with new product ideas with our uh, tremendous product team. And you know, one of the things that attracted me to FS was the focus, not, not only this year or five years ago, but as far back as 2009, starting complex fixed income products like BDCs, or now we're doing senior secured uh, commercial real estate debt products that can take complex income streams and deliver them to the average investor in a very digestible way mm. and accessible way. Because as you know, Oliver, one of the biggest challenges for investors the past five years and into the future is how do you replace fixed income, right? There's duration has been return free risk and income has been few and far between. So we can find unique ways like packaging uh, middle market uh, private credit in user-friendly ways like BDCs or senior secured commercial real estate debt in uh, public non-traded REITs and generate an attractive income stream. That's a very exciting firm and I'm uh, super, super pumped to be on board. Great stuff, Troy. We've uh, enjoyed speaking with the team at FS Investments about the economy for some time. Uh, Laura Rame's been a regular here on the show. Looking forward to having of you course. as well. Uh, I know that uh, your history also, you've spent a lot of time with alternatives as, as you're discussing a few examples here. When you talk about the end result of those products that are designed to generate income in an inflationary environment, you mentioned some of these uh, investments make sense in a REIT package. What other ways does it average Average investor have to get access to some of these products you're describing that might sound a little bit more sophisticated or a little bit more offbeat from the usual uh, words and usual styles that they're used to hearing and how they get access to these more complicated uh, debt to instruments yeah well, well so remember the, the holy grail for uh, product providers or alternative firms is how do you deliver a consistent income stream preferably floating rate right now, right? Because we're about to enter a Fed hiking cycle and do it in a way where you have as little economic downside as possible, mm. as little sensitivity to the next inevitable economic dislocation or recession. And so when you look across fixed income markets, right? High yield bond spreads are relatively tight. There's certainly opportunity in CLO still. Uh, but if you look at senior secured commercial real estate debt, because of a lot of the secular changes in the banking system and the fact that they're much more reluctant to do loans that aren't plain vanilla, they're much happier just buying treasuries and buying agency pass-throughs and, and parking their excess cash at the Fed, which is now up to $1.5 trillion, Oliver. Um, so because of that, you, you have unusually large spreads and income streams, but you're still senior in the capital structure and you have tangible assets behind that. So. If you can take those assets, put a few turns of leverage on them, finance it through the CLO market, you end up with somewhere between a six to seven percent income stream that's paid out in a very user friendly uh, wow. product as a REIT. Um, and the downside risk is very modest, even if you go back to what we saw in the financial crisis. So we think that's arguably the most differentiated income stream out there. Mm. Uh, we also have interval funds as well which basically take advantage of uh, slightly less liquidity. So the manager does not have to pay out redemptions monthly or quarterly. They have to pay out about 20% of the capital per year. And that allows them to go after uh, some of the remaining inefficiencies in structured credit, like uh, double B and triple B minus CLOs, which again are floating rate and also have much more uh, fundamental resilience to the next economic downturn. That being said, Oliver, we, we, we expect the economy to be very strong next year and the biggest risk for markets to be higher rates. Mm. So you'd rather be long the Fed and in floating rate securities than in fixed rate securities right now. Troy, you mentioned the uh, net result of a six to seven percent uh, return possibility on a year. Is this a way to replace 
uh, is, is equity risk part of the portfolio or an addendum to it? Because six, seven percent, you're basically hitting the uh, average return for the S and P. Uh, is this uh, more a, a bond replacement, or is this can this also function to offset uh, equity market risk? Yeah, it's a great question, Oliver. So really, the past four or five years, the main focus for investors going into alternatives has been to replace uh, income, um, to shorten duration. Uh, and then you had the pandemic shock, of course. And as you know, Oliver, from the bottom to really today and into early next year, I've been a green light go guy that you, know, you want to take directional risk, whether it's structured credit, equities, crypto, uh, et cetera. Um, so for most of the past several years, it's been a fixed income replacement. It will still be a fixed income replacement. However, now that we're finally transitioning to a period uh, of tapering, of lower mon money supply growth, of eventual Fed hikes in the back half of the year, and equity multiples you know, are, are basically 21 to 22 times next year earnings, 20 times 23 earnings, it's becoming much more viable as a uh, equity replacement as people, again, you're not gonna go from a 60% allocation of equities to zero, but it makes a lot of sense to trim some of your gains and reallocate to, the, to assets that can have a competitive return and also much less downside. And, and if inflation does stay around longer than most people expect, and if the Fed is forced to hike more aggressively, you're actually rooting for that because you're in floating rate securities. Mm -hmm. And Troy, as you uh, look at uh, the forecast for next year, it sounds like your uh, base case right now is that there will be uh, hikes. You mentioned earlier the phrase hiking cycle. Is uh, that the view that uh, the market pricing in hikes next year faster than Powell suggesting? Is that going to be the way this goes down? Well, remember, the, the first step here is the taper. So as the mm -hmm. taper starts to take hold, uh, particularly in Q1 and Q2, you're going to see money supply growth slow dramatically. So that is the first step transitioning from hyper-loose monetary policy back to ultra-loose monetary policy. Mm -hmm. And then assuming, as we do, that we'll have somewhere between 5 and 8% nominal GDP growth, uh, it's more than likely that the Fed hikes somewhere between one and three times in the back half of the year. Um, and. and we're still constructive on the economy, but next year, particularly the back half, will more than likely look uh, very similar to the back half of 18, where again, the economy does exceptionally well, or at least stronger than typical, but because we're entering a tightening cycle and money supply growth starts to slow to fairly low levels, and you're starting at such high multiples, you'll have a lot more chop in markets, you know, multiple 10% corrections, Ultimately, equities could end the year higher, somewhere in line with earnings. Mm. But but the probability of getting multiple expansion at these levels into tighter money supply, very unlikely. And you could see some degree of multiple compression. Troy, it's great to get your thoughts here. Looking forward to more. We got to take this opening bell. Welcome back to the show and uh, looking forward to continuing this conversation in the next year. Have a great holiday. Great to see you all. We're happy Thanksgiving. Absolutely.